Hi and welcome to this Dreamweaver tutorial. My name is Daniel Walter Scott and I'm a trainer here at Bring Your Own Laptop. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to create a menu and a drop down menu. Now there are a couple of different ways to create a menu on a website. Um, I prefer the full CSS controlled um, drop down menu. Um, the reasons are is that it works good on mobile and Google likes it. Um, there are lots of other tools online and lots of other tutorials showing you how to do a drop down menu. Now my only advice is to double check that they work on a mobile device and to make sure that Google likes them. There are lots of technologies or older technologies that have kind of come and gone that don't really work anymore or not as good as what I think the CSS menu does. So to do it, if you are jumping into this tutorial and you haven't done the tutorial series, um, the big thing you need to note is that you need an ordered list. So I've got a home a link to a home page, a link to about us page, and they're in this thing called an ordered list, which is this button down here, the bullet points, this ordered list. Okay, I want to have a quick little look at this in code view, just so that everyone remembers what it looks like. So I'm in source code under index. You can see there's my ordered list. You can see it opens there and closes there. Inside of there, so uh, sorry, unordered list, which is UL, okay, which is the bullet points. And inside of here are all the list items. Okay, inside my list. So these are the bullet points themselves. So this is the list, this is the bullet points themselves. We need to understand this a tiny bit so we can create the right CSS to make this work. And what I'll do as well is, if you're finding this tutorial a little long, which kind of is this one, um, you can, I'll add in the notes of um, below the video um, a link to a shortcut to a working version so you can maybe pick that apart and use that instead. All right, so I'm going to go back to the design view. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to remove the bullet points. Okay, it's still going to be an ordered list, unordered, uh, unordered list, but I want to remove the bullet points and the padding around the outside. So I can do that with my CSS styles. So I'm going to go to my CSS designer. I am going to create a new selector. So I hit the little plus button on the selectors. Now it's going to default to something I don't want. So I'm going to type in over the top hash nav, which is my navigation. If you're working on a completely different website and not the one in the tutorial, you've got to make sure that the name, we've got nav, is the same of this div tag that we've created. We've called ours nav. So you need to make sure that's the same name. And then we're gonna look at a UL, which is our unordered list, which is bullet points. And there's a couple of things I'm gonna hit enter. What I'd like to do to it is I'd like to remove all the margins and padding. Because by default, uh, it has padding a margin to kind of push it away from the edges and you can see it's quite far away from the edge here. We'll move the padding and the margins. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to hit this little link icon to save some time. If you link and change this one to zero, it changes the height left, right and bottom at the same time. So it's going to be zero pixels. You can see they all become zero pixels. And you can see over here it's removed the padding from the top and the bottom and it's moved left and right. So, well, sorry, sorry, the margin left and right. Let's look at do the same for the padding. So I'm going to go zero pixels. Okay, Ooh, should have my little link icon. Zero pixels. And should do them all. And now you can see it's pushed all the way to the edge here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is remove the bullet points. You can see them over here on the left hand side hanging out the edge there. So we need to remove those. To do it, we need to make sure we're styling our nav.ul, our unordered list. If you lose that and you can't find it, make sure go back to main.css. Okay, I'll click your CSS sheet, scroll all to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and there's nav URL. So I'm looking for the one that's called list style type. And underneath it, okay, I'm gonna pick none and then click enter on my keyboard. Enter twice on my keyboard. I know in an earlier version, I can't remember exactly where, but it was down in other. I think it was right down the bottom in other. So you might have to have a look around, but you're looking for list style type and switch it to none. And you'll notice when I click out here. Okay, the bullet points have been removed. Okay, so the full stops have gone. Let's move on to the next bit. The next thing we need to do is look at stacking these on side by side. At the moment, they're underneath each other. So what we need to do in CSS is get them to stack um, left and right along the top rather than on top of each other. Okay, so to do that, we need to create a new selector. And this one is called hash nav. Okay, the name of my div tag. And we're going to use the li. Sorry, li. Okay, which is our list item. Okay, so look in code view. We've worked. Um, we're working on these guys here. We're going to style these guys, the LIs. So what do we want to do to them? 
Um, there's nav li, I'd like it to float to the left. Floating to the left, it's towards the top, just underneath padding and margins, there he is, float. I'm gonna to get to this one first little icon that says float left. You'll notice they all stack next to each other. One of the problems is, is that because these guys are floating left, this text box ends up trying to join it up in the list. Now to fix that, we need to add a height to the navigation. So click on your nav, and in an early tutorial I showed you how to remove all your height. Okay, But for the navigation it's really common to have a physical height for it. So for this nav, I'm going to give it a height okay, of pixels, and I'm going to give it 22 pixels. Okay, Just give it some height. Now don't worry if these don't quite display correctly in Design View and Dreamweaver. Give it a preview in um, Chrome. Okay, save it, and you'll notice it looks it looks fine in here, except for they're butted up right next to each other, but we'll fix that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is try and get some space between these buttons, add a bit of a background color to them so they look more like a button. Um, let's do that. We do we need to create a selector called nav, and it's A. A is the um, active link, okay, and so we're styling all the links in the nav bar, and I'd like to do a couple of things to it. I'd like to put a background color around it. So I'm going to skip down to background color, pick a color, and color. Okay, I'm also going to look at right to the top here, we need to change the display to a block, just so that we've got more of an area to click. So it's not just the text that's clickable, it's the whole um, background part of the um, box there. Next thing we'll look at is putting our padding around it. So I'm going to put a padding at the top of five. I'm going to put a bottom of five. I'm going to put a left hand of 20 and a right hand of 20 as well. Okay, and doesn't display perfectly here, but if I preview in a browser, yes, to saving it, um, you'll notice, there we go, we've got some, we've got our links, but they've got more of a background area now. Okay, let's look at the next bit. Next thing we're going to do is um, in the same one, so nav A, you can go through in here is where you can pick your specific font and color. Um, so I'm going to go through and pick a color of white for my text. So I'm in this text option. Uh, font family, I'm going to leave that alone. Font style, font size, I'm going to go through and change it to Eames. Okay, and in Eames, I'm going to use, uh, I'll use 0.9 Eames. Okay, to give it about that sort of size. Now, if you've got an underline under your text and you want to get rid of that, you can hit this one that says text decoration and use none for that. Preview in a browser. Okay, I've got my text. It's wide. It's uh, 0.9 eams, no underline, and the links are working. I'm jumping from page to page. And one thing I have noticed is that you can see that my I fixed it earlier. Um, but this text box is kind of pushed to the right hand side here now. So if I preview in the browser, you can see it's kind of squished over to the side. So to fix that, I've guessed a wrong height for my nav. So I'm going to click on my nav in the div tag, okay, in the breadcrumbs. And I set it to 22 earlier. I'm going to set it to a lot higher. So I'm going to go up to 30. Just so there's room for all these buttons to fit inside there. Okay, don't worry if it's still a little broken in um, Dreamweaver. It's really just making sure it's right in Chrome. Okay, you can see now it's lining up a whole lot better. Now the next one uh, that I'd like to do is I would like when people are looking at the website and hovering above the different buttons, there's a bit of a hover color change so they know where they're clicking. So to do that, we need to create another class. So, sorry, another um, selector. So I'm gonna to go to the selectors panel, hit plus. This one is gonna be called nav, and then a space and put an a colon hover. This just means this A tag, which is our active link, okay, when I hover above it, I'd like it to do whatever I tell it down the bottom here. So I'm clicking enter, and I'm gonna say I would like it to do a background color of, uh, I'm gonna do just something a lot lighter. So this nav, okay, this uh, active link, when it's been hovered across inside this nav div is gonna apply this background color. Let's give that a try. So I'm gonna go preview my browser, Give it a hover, and you can see when I hover above it, it changes to that nice hover color. All right, and um, let's look at the next step.
All right, this next step is to add the drop down part of the menu. So to do it, it's a lot easier to turn your CSS off and work um, with just raw HTML. So to do that, I go to view, down to style rendering, and there's one that says display style. So this is gonna turn off all the CSS that we've created. So we're gonna have the basic HTML, but none of the styling that goes along with it. So I'm gonna turn that off, and it all looks a bit sad, but it makes it a little easier to work with doing drop down menus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, um, under home, I'm gonna put a return in, I'm gonna put in products, okay? And I'm gonna turn this into a hyperlink. Now, I don't have a page for this to go to yet, so I should be, I should type in products.html, but I don't have that page. A nice little workaround is where it says link is to put in a hash, okay, or a pound symbol. To put in that, it will mean that it, watch up here, you can see it turns into an active link, and it just doesn't go anywhere, but it's a placeholder until I um, build that page. So that's great. Um, let's preview it in a browser. And you'll see when you preview it in the browser, it'll put the style back on. So it looks back to normal. Okay, and I've got my little products page. Okay, it doesn't go anywhere because I click on it. It doesn't go anywhere, but that's okay. What I'd like to do now is have a drop down menu for products. And we're going to have, let's say, blue, green, and red products. To do it, I'm going to click enter under products and I'm going to put in a tab. Now I use the tab on my keyboard. You could use this down here. It's a little button um, indent. Click that. So you can see the little um, bullet point changes to a slightly different one. This means it's nested inside this products one. So I'm going to do uh, green, blue, and red. And what I'd like you to see is under code view is that, um, and I'm going to go to source code, is that I've got this overall UL, okay, which is my on ordered list. And that has my home page, it has my about us and contact us page. So there's my home page, okay, there's my products page and there's my about and contact us page. What we've done is we've created inside this list item, so there's the open of this list for products, you can see there's the close of it there, inside of it I've made another UL. So it's a little nested UL inside of an overall UL. And inside of this UL it's got its own little list. Okay, so red, green, and blue. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the design view and highlight green and add a link to it, just so it gets styled nicely. So the hash. Under blue, I'll put a hash, and the red, I'll put a hash. All right, so next thing I'd like to do is let's give it a preview in the browser. Okay, you'll notice that they are there, and you can see them. Next thing I want to do is hide them so they only appear when you roll over the products button. At the moment, they just there all the time. So to do that, let's create, um, in my main.css, I'm gonna create a selector called hash nav, this one do take called nav, and I want the unordered lists that are inside un uh, and inside another unordered list. So it means that I've got this overall UL, and I've got this other UL that's inside of it, and I've created a class under main.css that says if I have a nav that is um, that is a list inside of another list, I'd like it to do these things. And I'd like it to go to display, and I'd like it to go to none, which is gonna hide it. And I also need to turn the position from static to absolute. Hopefully now, if I give this a preview in the browser, okay, it's gone. The problem is it's gone forever. All right, to now turn it back on, what we need to do is create a selector that is a nav, Okay, for my UL, so it's an unordered list, but I'd like the list objects, okay, when hovered on, to show the UL that's within them. Now, you might have to copy and paste that one, or uh, pause or YouTube for a little bit to type that one. It's, it's hash nav, space UL, space ally, colon, hover, space greater than, less than, oh, can remember, space UL. What I'd like to, this class to do is when that all ties together, I would like it to go to and go to display and go to block. Block will actually show it, even though block sounds like it won't. Okay. So let's give that a preview in a browser. So when I hover above it, it appears. Hey, okay. And there you have a drop down menu. But one thing you'll notice is that they're stacked side by side. 
which is not how a lot of people want them to work. They want them to stack underneath it. Now to fix that, we need to do one last class. Okay, and sorry, one last selector. So we're gonna go into our selectors and we're going to type in nav. We're gonna have the list items that are inside ULs, inside ULs. So that's these little drop down parts. Okay, what I'd like to do with them is I'd like them to go and at the moment, um, they're being told to float left. We did that in an earlier part of this tutorial. What I need to do now is say, just these guys, ignore that float. So we're gonna to go to float none. All right, and that will turn that float left off just for these little guys. So let's go to preview and Chrome. Hopefully now when we hover above them, they all stack on top of each other. All right, uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you found it a little bit hard to follow, um, I've um, I will make the exercise files um, available in the notes below the video um, and you can kind of cheat and grab the CSS and customize it to your own needs. But if you're learning, uh, work your way through the list um, through this tutorial because it is a great way to start understanding compound selectors and how they all kind of combine to do different jobs. What I'll also do is I'll show you my CSS um, panel so you can kind of compare it to yours. I'll put it down in the notes as well so it makes it easier. But I might as well do it in this video as well. Um, so I'm going to go to main.css um, and go to code view and you'll see down here, here are all the CSS classes we've made. So it's from here all the way down to here are the ones we need um, for our uh, navigation. So um, I'll kind of scroll through them and you can pause YouTube if you're double checking it against yours or hopefully you'll be able to see the um, notes below. Last thing I'll show you is how to turn your CSS styling back on. So go to view, down to style rendering, and turn display styles back on. All right, I'll see you in the next tutorial.